coming up this Saturday. The co-main of a main card that features Carlos Adamas taking on Julian J. Rock Williams. We're going to see Erickson Lubin taking on Luis Arias. This could be the fight of the night. Let's talk about Lubin versus Arias. recently did a Stormy B-Man's Boxing Raps live stream and I talked about it's heating up in boxing and when I say heating up I'm talking about the temperature of the fights they're heating up we're starting to see quality matchups here there sprinkled around totally coming together for our entertainment and it is to be appreciated. Such is the case with this Saturday, June 24th's broadcast on Showtime, where we're going to see Erickson Luger and Luis Arias take on one another in a scheduled 10 rounder in the super welterweight division. These two men have had the type of careers that have seen them in exciting bouts and challenged. They've both suffered losses and they've suffered serious losses, but they have bounced back to continue to compete. So we're looking at Arias, who's coming into the fight with a record now of 20 and three and one draw, nine KOs. He doesn't have a lot of pop on his punches, but one of the things that Arias has is grit and determination. He has the will of a fighter. He has that type of disposition that you want to see out of a guy who comes to bring it, his hard hat and lunch pail. I remember his fight with Danny Jacobs, and it was a physical fight where Jacobs had to actually fight him because Arias was just coming on in his face, pressing the issue, really forcing him into the type of fight that he may not have initially wanted to fight. Now, Jacobs was able to prevail because he had a little bit more on the skill set side. So that accompanying his physical presence, he was able to turn back that challenge from Arias and turned it into a unanimous decision. Lubin, on the other hand, is the type of fighter that he is more of a classic boxer puncher and his record now of 24 and two with 17 KOs indicates the type of fighter that he is. When he's in there, he does try to knock his opponents out. He's a little bit more of a calculating fighter and he operates behind a stiff jab. He has decent lateral movement, but he has been prone to get drawn into affairs that may not benefit him when he starts to go toe to toe, when he starts to slug unnecessarily, he opens himself up and those are his vulnerabilities, but he, definitely has the type of punching power that can get him out of dire straits. You take his fight recently with Sebastian Fondora, when Fondora was basically putting it on him and Lubin was able to come back and drop Fondora with a single shot, which was interesting because 
Had he been looking to punch in combination, he possibly could have got Fandora out of there, but his facial damage was such that the fight was stopped. But again, when you talk about a fighter like these two men, they're going to bring excitement and their styles are what will get butts out of the seats standing in approval because when you look at Arias who's aggressive and physical and is a crude fighter but he lacks discipline and his technique fades as the fight goes on and he begins to fatigue. He's not the best thinker in there so when that technique goes away he's just relying on his physicality and that's where a more adept fighter can take advantage of him and do things that can find them in a more positive outcome when they're facing him. But again, let it be known, just like when he fought Jared Hurd, he will not give up. He's relentless. Sometimes he'll even put on that face that he might begin to fade or something, but it's a trap to lure you in. He does have that type of ring IQ where he can make the opponent feel a certain kind of way so that he can get done what he's trying to incorporate during the fight. Now, again, when we're talking about Lubin, his punches from the orthodox position as far as if you're the orthodox fighter, he being a southpaw, he can catch you with those straight lefts. I've seen him go to the body, I've seen him come back to the head, and he has a sneaky right hook that he finishes his combinations with. As I spoke earlier, he's a very technically sound southpaw outboxer. He likes to work from outside to medium range. He's not much of an inside fighter, and he has very good pop on his punches, but he has reckless tendencies. And that's where Arias may have some success if he's able to draw Ruben, Lubin excuse me, into exchanges. Because it's not about Arias trying to knock him out. It's about him making Lubin fight his fight where he has advantages that he wouldn't otherwise entertain because he's not the boxer that Lubin is. Now Lubin has spoken in recent interviews that he feels that Arias isn't on his level. And we hear fighters talk like that sometimes, but every once in a while when the fights take place, the man who was able to impose his will on the other is usually, typically, the successor. And when, when you have that type of influence and impact on your opponents, you can see the guy who may be the favorite lose, and the guy who was the underdog prevail. And in this fight, Arias is the underdog. But I'll tell you, once the fists start flying, underdog goes out of the window. All the more reason to tune in. This is going to be the type of fight that either man can come out victorious as long as they stick to their gun. Arias has to pull that recklessness out of Lubin. Lubin has to remain cool and box, use his power from range and execute punches in combinations. Arias will put his head in Lubin's chest and try to dig and make it a dog fight. That is not to Lubin's advantage. We have seen these type of fights play out so many times in the past. So it's up to Erickson Lubin, who says that Arias is not on his level to go out there and to show that. We can't just take his word for it. He can't just feel that as far as in his in the depth of his cavity with pride. He has to put that on display. And that's what will make 
this fight very interesting, intriguing. If we hold these fighters accountable to what they say, they have to come back and find a way to implement what they talk about. Otherwise, it's just whistling in the dark. And I believe that if you hold the fighters to task, they will buckle down. They'll hear the critics. They'll hear what's being spoken about in social media about them and want to impress or prove someone wrong. So as we see this fight coming down to the wire, like I said, it could end up being the fight of the night on this card. Adamus versus Williams will not be a bad fight either, but I'm telling you, check it out. This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know who do you have, Lubin or Arias. It should be a very good fight. I can't wait. I love what's happening in boxing right now. They're giving us the good stuff. Peace to everyone out there. And everyone, please remain safe.